Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I seem to have done the same thing I did last year where I upload for Halloween and then kind of just drop off the face of the planet and come back in the next year. So, hi, how's it going? At least this year I have a good excuse. Uh, I moved and I had my first convention. So, you know, stuff happened. <clears throat> I swear one day I'm gonna get good at this. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but thank you for clicking this video and checking on in. In today's video, we will be working on a winter dragon. This was actually a commission piece. The customer wanted a Haku looking like dragon, which if you don't know who Haku is, oh my God, where have you been? Please go watch the movie Spirit Away. It is amazing. But they wanted that type of body style, but they wanted winter elements into it. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. The first step is always to sculpt the head and feet. To do this, I'm actually going to be using two different types of clay today. The first being super sculpty, and that's what I'm using to make the head out of, which is usually my first step. I always do this before I do the feet. Um, I start out with a lump of tinfoil that I've squished into the rough head shape that I'm going for. I do this for a few reasons. The first being that clay is expensive and it's going to save me a bunch of it. It's also going to bake more evenly in the oven because I imagine if you don't use tinfoil and this was just a huge lump of clay, that is going to take a long time to bake and there's a lot of room for error when something's that thick. So it's just... It's cost effective and bake effective if you just use the tin foil. And then after that, I um, wrap the tin foil in one layer of clay and then just start pushing things around, trying to figure out the head shape that I'm going for. I have now become a believer of sculpting tools. Now, that being said, you certainly do not need them if you're first starting out because I went for years and years just using a needle and my nails and my fingers, that's all I did. But now I'm finally starting to learn the joys of sculpting tools. So if you have the spare money, I say go for it. But if you don't, don't worry about it. You can totally make awesome works of art with or without it. Um, that being said, I am using them to uh, help me place things better, especially with the eyes. It's a lot easier to use the sculpting tools when I use the eyes or nose and, and, and mouth and things like that. So it's really good for details like that, that that's really when you want to use them. And now, as I mentioned with every video, references people, references. I was looking up so many pictures of Haku and just trying to, I, I want to get his general head shape, but I also still want to stay true to myself. So I'm trying to find a balance of what my quote unquote style is and what the um, actual dragon looks like. So whenever you're making a character or you're trying to base it off something realistic or whatever you're trying to do, references will always help you better place um eyes noses mouth it'll help you figure out where everything's supposed to go how everything's supposed to look so make sure you're looking at it from all different types of angles to make sure you got everything in the right spot i swear people it honestly helps so much it makes everything so much easier also please forgive if my camera angles are still a bit wonky i'm still working on it and every time i take a break i kind of have to reteach myself how to do it i'm getting better though because this time at least it's in the frame and not like off camera where you can't see anything it may only be on one side of the screen but it's in the screen so it counts <laughs> Thank you. 
So you'll notice that the clay I'm using here is a different color because this is a different type of clay. Um, this type of clay is called cost clay and it's a really awesome new material that's coming out into like, I don't know, the clay world. Um, it's a type of clay that once you bake it, it stays flexible, which is like a complete game changer. I don't think it's out yet. Um, I was part of the beta testing, so I got my hands on a couple packs of it. But once the stuff is completely baked, you can still bend it and stuff like it's never been baked before and it doesn't break. And it's just like, oh my God, guys, it is so amazing. I honestly am probably just going to be switching to using nothing but this clay when I can get my hands on more of it because it is just really, really awesome stuff. So as soon as it's like commercially available, I will be linking you guys everywhere to get this stuff because it is really, really awesome and everybody should know about it. It's also what I'm making the feet out of. Um, because Haku has like scaly legs, um, it's not furry all the way down, I decided to sculpt all of that. And I'm using the cost clay because it'll still stay flexible and I won't have to worry about any of it breaking or anything. So I am wrapping um, tin foil around the legs just to beef up so I don't have to use as much of the cost clay. Again, it saves me clay and it, it it's, uh, bakes more evenly in the oven. So, you know, it's still a win-win situation. Once I've sculpted all the pieces, I bake them at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 to 45 minutes.
once all the clay pieces are attached to the armature that I've made, it's time to build up the body. And for that, I use quilt batting. Um, they come in really big sheets and rolls that you can get from pretty much any craft store. You can even buy them from Walmart if you guys have one. Um, and I'll just cut it into long strips and then wrap it around the body over and over and over until the body's built up to how I want. Now I've mentioned this before, you want to make sure that you don't build up the body quite as thick as you want because you want to leave a little bit of space for how much um, thickness your fabric is going to add. So you know, for this instance, since I'm using fur, it's going to add a lot of thickness to it and so I want to make sure that I'm not building up the body quite as much as I want or else then it's going to be too too big or too too beefy and you know sometimes we don't want that if you want that i mean go for it but you know in this case i did not want that so just be mindful of when you guys are doing that uh once again i would recommend maybe looking at a previous video of how i sew the bodies it's kind of the same it's just pretty much in reverse order so it might make it a little bit more difficult to somebody who's just starting out but pretty much what I just did is I cut a piece of fabric the entire length of the body. I cut slits where I want the legs to slide through the fabric. But instead of doing it to where I sew straight down like the belly, I did it to where I would sew straight down the back because I'm going to be using two different fabrics. So I'm using a, um, a fabric that has really short um, pile fur and then I'm using one that has a long pile fur. Uh, so it's a lot, I really wouldn't recommend this for someone who's just starting out because it could be a real pain. I'm, I'm not even kidding. If you're starting out, I write recommend, I write recommend. Yeah, I did that. I might recommend um, just using a solid piece of uh, fabric first. Don't use like multiple colors and just until you get the feel of it first, just because it is a little bit more advanced and a little bit more tricky. Um, if you want to go for it, I, if you think you can, like absolutely go for it. Just maybe take your time and go a little bit easier on yourself because I hate sewing. It's like, I, I hate it so much. So if anyone else is like me, understand that it is not that fun. That is my dog. <laughs> my dog just showed up into my, <laughs> my friend is like photo bombing all the animals into this video. It's just whatever. But anyways, yes. Just take your time with whatever method you choose, you're gonna rock it. For the legs, it's a similar process. I'll just cut a piece of fabric the entire length of the leg that I want to sew. I'll trim it down to size and then I'll sew starting from the feet, working my way up towards the body. And to join the body fabric and leg fabric together, I use a ladder stitch. Once all the sewing is done, thankfully I didn't have to trim pretty much anything with this because the fur was already the thickness that I was going for. So if you'd like to see me trimming um, types of fur fabrics, then uh, click, feel free to click on a different video because I didn't do it in this one. Um, next is painting. And I know previously I said 
Uh, whatever uh, acrylic paint you use is fine. You can just go for it. Okay, well, I've changed my mind about that. At least pay attention to what kind of paint you're buying. See, I used a acrylic paint from Golden. It was just white paint, and I just assumed that it was going to be like any other white paint, and I was sorely mistaken. Uh, apparently, it's like a really sheer tint type of paint, which just made painting this guy a total nightmare it took like 10 layers of white just to get anything to show correctly and instead I had to go buy like cheap folk art paint and it worked so much better so just when you're buying acrylic paint maybe pay attention to is it an opaque paint is it a sheer tint kind of paint because you know that's the difference between whether you're gonna have a great time or a nightmare of a time, okay? I don't want you guys to have a nightmare of a time, so learn from my mistakes. Please look at the back of the bottles. I'm so scarred. <laughs> I'm so scared of getting this kind of crap paint again. It was just, it was horrible. Oh, I don't recommend it at whatsoever. Okay, after the paint debacle, it was time to add scales to the body. And for this, I'm just using felt. I cut it into strips and then into little squares and just rounded off the edges so that the scales had a nice round um, look to them like uh, Haku does in the movie. And then I would just, I glue them in a specific way so that they still move with how the body is being posed. So when I add, um, glue to glue it on. I only glue the very edge of one side so that it'll still flex and the felt scales will overlap each other when it's being moved. So that's something you want to keep in mind of because if you didn't and you try to move it, it's going to be a lot more stiff and it's going to be a lot more difficult. So if you just glue it on the one side, it still leaves the rest of it free, I mean, quote unquote, free floating so that it will fold over itself and still move how you want it to. Okay, and lastly is to add all the winter elements, which is actually my favorite part of whenever I get a commission like this, because I learned I love gluing random stuff onto my art dolls. Like it is my jam. I love doing it so much. And so for this, I just, it's hard to figure out what kind of wintry elements, especially when you don't have like a lot of space to put a bunch of stuff. So I just tried to go with, you know, a lot of cool toned colors, you know, whites, light grays and and really light blues and stuff and, and just adding branches and little wintry flower looking stuff. And it was just, it's really fun because I don't plan out this at all. I just get a bunch of stuff that I think might work together and then I just start gluing it on and figuring it out as I go. And it's really fun because I don't have to worry about planning anything. I just, wherever I think something might look great, I just go for it and put it on there. And it just, it's really awesome.
after all of that this dragon is finished thank you guys so much for sticking around still watching my videos with my sporadic as all heck schedule i will be focusing this year on trying to get that more regular regulated regular as you can see i don't even do voiceovers often so i'm just like all over the place but anyways thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one which will be soon i promise don't leave. Okay, bye.